This is going to be a walkthrough of power factor correction. We're going to have some loads, some inductive loads, that's going to give us a crappy power factor. You're going to see that we're going to have a high current. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw a capacitor in there that's going to improve our power factor, and we're going to see how our current is going to drop like it's hot. So just to get started here, we have a system that's got 480 volts. That's my supply voltage right there. I got these three motor loads here. You can tell from the drawings. Now each of these motor loads I've given you different variables. So we're going to go step by step what to do with each one of these. This one's a 5 horsepower motor. This little N here that means it has an efficiency of 79%, a power factor of 56%. Over on this guy here it's got 13 kilowatts of true power with a phase angle of 60 degrees. And over here it is got 21 kVar of inductive uh, power, wattless power being used with the power factor 71%. And this little guy here, that's the power factor um, capacitor that we're going to be putting in there to fix it all up. So let's take a look what we're going to be dealing with, what we're going to be looking for. What we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to figure out what our initial line current is and what our power factor is of the entire circuit of all of this. So we're going to add all these guys up in parallel to figure out what our line is and line current and our line power factor. After that, we're going to figure out what size of this capacitor needs to be to correct the power factor to 95%. Again, we're going to walk through every single step on the way. And after we put in that power factor capacitor, we're going to figure out what our new current is. It's going to change everything. Okay, let's get started here. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these branches and the method I use is I create a triangle for each branch. So let's get started here. We'll start with this guy over here. Now before we get started, we're going to have to figure out what the true power of this guy is. We can do that using this horsepower here. That horsepower and this efficiency will give us a number we can use. Again, we're always going to be basing it off of power. We're going to be building these power triangles. Now we've got to remember that for uh, efficiency, efficiency is output over input. This five horsepower that we've got here, that is our output. And we know that for one horsepower is 746 watts, right? We should all know that by this point. Let's take a look how this is all going to play out. There's that formula, efficiency is output over input, and we want the electrical input to put out that five horsepower output. Our first step is going to be turning that horsepower into power. We're going to take 5 horsepower times 746 watts and that gives us 3730 watts. Now we're going to plug in what we know so far. We know that we have an output power of 3730 watts. We know our efficiency is 79% or 0.79 and we are trying to figure out what our input is. We do a little transposition razzle dazzle here. We're going to cross multiply 0.79 times input is equal to 3730. Then of course we want to get input alone so we have to divide the 0.79 out of there. 0.79 we divide to that side as well. Whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other. So our input is going to be 3730 watts divided by 79% or 0.79. And then we just discover we've worked out that our input is actually 4721.5 watts which is the number we're going to be using for the triangle so let's go back and take a look at that circuit okay so I have built the triangle here what I've done is I take 4.7 kilowatts and I've taken this power factor this power factor I've talked about in other previous lessons power factor and angle are very closely related. You can take the power factor in inverse cos it to get the angle. That's where I get that 38 degrees from. I went 0.56 inverse cos, gave me 38 degrees. Then from there I can use that and that and tangent to figure out what my 3.6 kVar is. I'm not going to go into detail how the tangent works at this point. I would expect you to know how that trigonometry works, but it's opposite over adjacent equals. So we can work out these two guys here. Now I've got 4.7 kilowatts on the bottom, 3.6 k bar on the side. I don't really need to work out what this is at this point. I could if I wanted to figure out what the current was through this branch. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working out our kilowatts and our bars and then we're going to be adding them all up and creating one triangle to rule them all over there. Let's take a look at our second branch now. 
With our second branch, I see that I've got 13 kilowatts, which I'm going to throw on the bottom of the triangle. I'm going to take again the angle using tangent and work out that I get 22.5 k bar on the side. Now let's work out this third branch right here. In the third branch, I put 21 k bar on the side. All reactive components go on the side. Using this angle here, I in tangent again, I can figure out that I have 21 kilowatts on the bottom. Now I've worked out all three of these guys. What we're going to do is we're going to take all three of these guys and add these three triangles together. I'm going to add up all my watts together to get an overall wattage on one side. I'm going to add up all my vars on that side to get my overall vars together. Then I'm going to work out my overall KVA. Boom. There you go. I went 4.7 plus 13 plus 21 gives me 38.7 kilowatts. I went 3.6 plus 22.5 plus 21 gave me 47.1 kvar. Using the power of Pythagoras, this squared plus this squared gives the square root of that. That's 61 kVA. With that now, I worked out that my angle is 51 degrees. Just using, you can use sine, cosine, tangent, whatever you want. Okay, let's move that triangle up there. Now with 51 degrees, that doesn't help us out with our power factor. What we need to do is figure out what our power factor is. And just like I talked about over here, how power factor and angle are close related, the same thing is true over here. You can just take the cos of 51 degrees is equal to 0.63. That's all you have to do is the cos of that angle gives you the power factor, 63% lagging. And there you go. Our next step is going to be to figure out what the current is. Our current is just going to be this kVA divided by this voltage. 61 kVA divided by 480 volts will give us our line current of 127 amps. There you have it. With no power factor correction capacitor in there, we are looking at 127 amps of current, source current flowing there. We didn't like that, so what we did is I've got my two triangles here. I have a triangle that we have. This is what we've already dealt with here. We got the 38.7 kVar, we got this, we've got that. Now we want to improve our power factor. We were at 63%. We want to improve our power factor over to 95%. The one thing that's not going to change because the resistance in the circuit will not change is this. So we're going to take this guy, the 38.7 kilowatts, over to the triangle that we want. That's the triangle we want now. With this guy here and this guy here, we're going to work out this side and this side. Again, I'm not going to go into the trigonometry of it because by this point, I imagine you guys are all experts at trigonometry. If you're not, go back and watch the videos on trig. Now, using 95%, what I've done, my little quick trip trick is, I take this divided by this gives me this, and that works every single time. Your kilowatts divided by your power factor gives you your kVA. Then I use Pythagoras. That squared minus that squared gives you the square root of that. And that gives us the triangle that we want. Now we have 47.1 kVar. We want 12.6 kVar. So we need a capacitor that's going to take this guy and drive it down until we get there. Remember that capacitive power and inductive power are opposite. So all we have to do is we take the 47.1 minus the 12.6, which is 34.5 kVar, it's going to take a 34.5 kVar capacitor to push this all the way down till it hits 12.6 kVar. This is the size of capacitor we need to improve our power factor to 95%. Yeah, let's look at the circuit again here. So we now know that over here, this capacitor has to be sized for 34.5 kVar. This is now our triangle that we have. It was the one that we, we let me go back a second and talk back what we had. This used to be 63%. Now it's 95%. So the triangle that we wanted is now the triangle that it becomes. We have 40.7 kVA on that side, which means that if we want to work out the current, same as before, all we have to do is take this kVA and divide it by this voltage and we get our new line current. 40.7 kVA divided by 480 volts gives us 84.8 amps, which is a significant difference. We have dropped quite a bit. Just as a reminder, we used to be drawing 127 amps. We are now drawing 84.8 amps. That's a significant difference, if you ask me. Well, if you ask anybody, really. 
Go ask your mother. She'll tell you the same thing. We were running this whole system at 127 amps. We put in this capacitor now. This capacitor has now dropped the current to 84.8 amps. These motors, they're still running. They're still doing the exact same thing. You won't hear anything happen with these things. They'll do the same work because the true power has not changed. All we've done is we've taken this inductive power here and we've driven it down until it's hit 12.6 K bar. That's power factor correction and that's a walkthrough.